Hello. So this video uh, is on factoring, and in particular, it's sort of an introduction and some notes to the factoring techniques that we're going to be discussing in the following videos. So there's really two main sort of quick points I want to make. Uh, first and foremost, a lot of these uh, techniques that we're going to be talking about uh, are, are sort of ostensibly sort of on the face of it are designed for quadratic uh, equations, sort of quadratic polynomials. But uh, when we talk about them and when we do them, I will often say something about being useful for a quadratic form. So I want to introduce this idea. So quadratic, so just to be sort of clear that we're all on the same page, quadratic function or quadratic polynomial is something of the sort of classic form ax squared plus bx plus c, right? This is a trinomial. You might wonder why it's quad uh, for, right? So quad is the prefix means four. And it's actually because this is um, the first time that these types of functions were studied some 4,000 years ago. Um, the main context they were studied in was in area of uh, four-sided shapes, so rectangles and things, um, which is where you get the quad from. It's actually considered an equation for an uh, area of a square or a rectangle. Some random history fact. So this is the actual quadratic polynomial. A quadratic form can be something that is a little bit different, but, oops, quadratic form, sorry. It is something that it appears different, but it's in some sort of fundamental structural way the same thing. And I'm going to give sort of an example to show. So an example of a quadratic function, e.g., for example, uh, could be something like 3x squared plus 2x minus 5 or something. Right, I'm just I'm making up a number, some numbers here. Right, and so we know it's a quadratic because it's a degree two polynomial. A quadratic form, on the other hand, um, so e.g., for example, could be something like five uh, x to the sixth plus three x cubed minus fourteen. Now, this is clearly not a quadratic equation or function, um, right? It's not a quadratic polynomial because it's not degree two. But nonetheless, it has the same form because it is something that we can make look like a quadratic using a very um, sort of important middle step. And the sort of magic middle step I'm gonna use, I'm gonna say let, so I'm gonna do uh, what is often called a U substitution um, usually you hear that in context of calculus, but there's nothing calculus about it. It's just an algebraic tool. So I'm going to let u be x cubed. In particular, that means that u squared is x cubed squared, which is x to the sixth, meaning I can take x to the sixth and replace it with u to the, uh, take x to the sixth and replace it with u squared. So this thing, if we call this sum, f of x, that means that I can rewrite f of x as 5. Instead of x to the 6th, I'm going to put u squared. And in fact, I should really do this as, well, no, I'm going to leave it like that. Um, I'm doing a substitution to get u squared. This is going to be plus 3u minus 14. And now this looks like a quadratic if I sort of ignore the fact that it was f of x and just look at it as in terms of u. This is a second degree polynomial in terms of u. It now looks like, so looks like a quadratic in terms of u. And this actually is really important um, because the whole idea of a quadratic form is exactly the situation where you can have things that are not themselves quadratics, but using some sort of clever substitution, you can make it into a quadratic and then just deal with the quadratic bit using the tools you know. Um, like here, you could try to use some sort of AC method, which we'll be covering. Um, worst case, you could always use the quadratic formula, the minus B plus or minus da 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 da. 
Um, you could use that to try to solve this, et cetera. So the question becomes, how do we know, right? Because there's something special about this form, otherwise I wouldn't be drawing attention to it, right? If I had, for example, 5x to the sixth plus 3x to the fourth minus 14, that would no longer be a quadratic form, okay? So quadratic form, the way we know, is that we have, so I'll write the general form, but then I'm gonna sort of write out what I'm trying to say, and that'll probably be the clearer one. Um, so quadratic form will be something like ax to the p plus bx to the, I guess I'll go with q, plus c, where 2q equals p. All right, i.e., that is, uh, so a quadratic form, I'm just gonna write quad form, is a trinomial, this is important, although here, I'm sort of doing this in a way that I said we shouldn't do it, uh, back when I went through the linguistics, because here I'm pointing out that it's a trinomial but I'm going to allow for the fact that it may actually have fewer terms. So when I say trinomial here, what I really mean is it's written like this, but it's possible that B or C might be zero. So it's a trinomial with possibly B or C equals zero. But the point is I can have, th I have sort of at most three terms all right, so it's a trinomial at most three terms. And only two terms have a power uh, of x. Or really, I mean positive power of x. So only two of the three have some sort of x attached. Right, the third one has to be a constant. And one of those powers is twice the other. So it has to have sort of three terms if I need to pad it with an extra term maybe. Two of those can have an x, one of them has to be constant. And the two that have an x, one of those powers, the one in front, if I did it correct, if I wrote it you know, highest to lowest, that leading term power has to be twice the other power. So if I go back over here, I have one, two, three terms. I have only two of them with an x with a constant. And one of those powers is twice the other. Okay, that's what makes a quadratic form. So for example, uh, we could look at something like 3x uh, to the 15th plus 2x to the 10th plus 1 is not a quadratic form, right? It has three terms. One of them is constant, but when I'm looking at this, that leading term is not twice, that leading power is not twice the other power, right? 15 is not 10 times two. Um, I could also do something like uh, 2x to the 10th um, minus five. This is a quadratic form because I can take this and write it as two, oops, sorry, two x uh, to the 10th plus zero x to the fifth minus five. And then I have three terms, one is constant, the power is twice the other power, right? And finally, uh, I could have something like x to the eighth um, plus three x to the fourth minus 15 is a quadratic form, right? Because again, three terms, one is constant, the leading power is twice the other. 
I guess I should do one more to emphasize the other possibility. So I could have something like 2x to the sixth plus 3x cubed plus x. And here, this is not quadratic form. Right, because here I have three terms, but I have, right, that this, um, all three of them have x terms. There's, it's not the case that one of them is constant, right? So even though the leading one is twice the next one, this is not constant, so it's still not a quadratic form, okay? So it's important to keep an eye out for quadratic forms. Okay, the other thing I wanna talk about is this idea of factoring versus fully factoring. So up to this point, it is quite possible that a lot of the time, sort of a lot of the homework or math problems that you've dealt with, you know, you're given an example and you're, say, and you're told, okay, go ahead and factor or go ahead and do whatever technique. And you do that technique and then you're done, right? Factoring is one of those things where you can do the thing that you're learning to do and still not be done. That's when the fully factoring thing comes into play. So let me give you an example. And I know we haven't talked about the actual techniques of factoring yet, so we're going to do that. I just wanna show um, the sort of thing that I mean, okay? So let's say my goal is to fully factor uh, P of X equals and let's say I have something like um, x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4x uh, minus 12, okay? So looking at this, this is a perfectly plausible thing for me to get during the uh, factor by grouping practice, right? So my sort of student thinking, I'm like, okay, I'm probably gonna need to do grouping which I realize, again, we haven't, we will talk about, I'm, I'm skipping ahead, so don't worry about the actual technique I'm about to do. I'll show, you, I'll show you what I'm talking about for this part in a minute. So I'm like, okay, I wanna do grouping. So P of X, this is uh, X squared times X plus three, minus four times X plus three. Aha, they match, I'm good, so that's gonna be X plus three, X squared minus four. Now, as a student, I might think, okay, this was in the grouping section. I just did grouping. I'm done. I'm not done. Because the instructions were not to factor by grouping. The instructions were to fully factor. And so when we, when we say fully factor, what we're saying is, is take the thing that we're given and keep factoring it until you can't factor it anymore. And so with factoring especially, this is very common the case where there is follow-up. There are more things that you have to keep doing to get the fully factored version, and you need to know when you are done or when you aren't. So generally speaking, whenever you factor, you want to go looking at each piece and see if any of the pieces are factorable. Noting, so some notes to sort of keep track of, any degree one is done. It's not factorable. So this term here, this is degree of one. Maybe I'll switch colors for a little bit of freshness here. So this thing is degree one, so it's done. Anything that is degree two, so um, degree two needs to be checked, by which I mean it is possible that it is not factorable, but it is possible that it is factorable. And degree three or more is always factorable. And that's actually a really important one because it may be the case that how you factor it is not obvious, right? So when I say degree three or more is always factorable, that is true. Anything degree three or higher is always factorable. 
but it may be really hard to factor it, right? So an example of that would be something like x to the fourth plus one. That is genuinely difficult to factor um, with the tools that we sort of have at our disposal, at our sort of, uh, in our grasp at the moment, although not impossible, but hard. Um, but it is good to know, right, that, I, that it absolutely is factorable. That is guaranteed, okay? So when I come back up to this problem that I'm working on up here, I know this piece is done. That piece I have to check. It turns out this thing is a difference of squares, which means I can sort of quickly factor it with other techniques, which again, we haven't done yet. But that tells me that I'm not done. So I need to do this as a difference of squares, at which point, right, this is degree one, this is degree one, this is degree one. Those are supposed to be check marks. It's just not a lot of spot, space there, okay? At which point now I know that I'm good, okay? So the, the idea here is that when, uh, just because you've applied a factoring technique, even if it's the factoring technique you're learning in that section, that doesn't mean that you fully factored something. And generally speaking, you always wanna fully factor something if you're factoring at all, right? So um, whenever you factor, you wanna sort of step back and pretend it's a new problem, look at each piece and see if each piece is factorable using this sort of general guideline. And we'll go through this a little bit more as we go, okay? All right, so that's sort of a general introduction to the factoring stuff. Um, we're gonna be talking about a bunch of stuff that is for quadratic forms, where a lot of the examples I'll give you are for quadratics themselves, but keep in mind there's these forms that you can use. Um, and pretty much always the instructions will be fully factor. So whenever you're done, you wanna go back through and make sure that you really are done, right? That you can't keep going, okay? And with that, we are done.